inspired by sound. Ah, hello everyone. Now this, this video is very exciting for me because I've wanted to bring you this video for a long time. MIDI drumming is one of my most favorite things to do as a musician, as a keyboard player, because I think it is an art form that people overlook a lot. Because what a lot of people do is step record their drums and play them in slowly, and then they have no feeling. Now I'm all about the feel and the rhythm and the groove. If you've heard any of my stuff, maybe you'll know that, maybe you won't. Today I'm going to talk to you about MIDI drumming and what it can do for your piece and how playing live, when after a little practice, will actually change the way that you produce music from now until forever. When you step record, it's quite clinical. Unless you go the extra mile and do ghost notes and uh, velocity curves and all sorts of fun things. But playing it and playing it live can change the way that you think about MIDI drumming forever. It's not just cheesy drums like we have in front of me at the moment. And I have this on purpose to demonstrate how different kits will make your piece shine or sound like a plastic toy. As usual with demos like this, I do have a track in mind and I'm going to play you the track now. It has no drums in it. And I'm going to show you a few of the drum kits I've got set up here and I'll talk you through a little bit of each of them. The track goes like this and it's just a little 16 bar loop. So that's what that does. Now I have a variety of drum kits here and I'm going to talk to you about them now. The first one, or the last one actually in my track list, is from the good old Roland SC88 Pro. And it's actually the SC88 default kit. Now back in the day when this is all we had, I'm talking sort of mid 90s, you could only get sounds like that and I'm rolling on the note now and this uh, and these this particular kit has only one layer per each drum so it doesn't matter how hard you hit it although the sound will actually get louder or softer because of the velocity that is how hard I hit it or don't the sound of the drum will not change above this I have a kit from Logic and I've done this so that people messing with this loop in GarageBand perhaps will be able to find or to play along with this and um, stick it in, in your door. I'm going to link to the multi-track for this project in the video, and it will just be the, the loop of, of the project. So what you'll be able to do is to copy out the thing and also a little two-track mix, which will be a loop, no drums, and you can put it into your sequencer of choice and play along with it and practice as we're gonna, I'm gonna show you today. And I'm also showing you these drum kits because as drum kits progress and you get more layers in the sound, um, you, can, you get a different feel out of the thing, and that's very important as well. But also because each drum kit has different aspects of it, and that is to say, for example, the kit when I go down one here, this kit has all the percussion in it that you would expect out of a general MIDI drum kit, or at least GS. Um, but a kit above won't have all of these things, and it stops. Here's a cowbell. After that, you get a cymbal and a gap and a cymbal, but then nothing for a long time. And then you get a shaker here and a stick here. So it's different. Different manufacturers will, in, will put different layouts in their drum kits. And that's okay too. When you come to uh, find whatever kit works best for your situation, you will find that you learn whatever works for you. I'm just showing you a few of the most standard ones. I don't have addictive on this Mac yet. I'm going to buy addictive drums at some point soon when I raise enough money from all these videos, because I really loved Addictive when I used to play it back in the uh, 2006 and seven days, and I miss it a lot. Above this is Superior Drummer. And again, with the layering, I hit that key, soft or hard, the sound changes. And what you'll also notice about this one is that the D and the E sound different as well. This will become uh, noticeable later. Above this, Studio Drummer. One of my favorite drum kits of all time. And this one uses the E flat for a, a, a yet a third snare. 
and a different layout above here completely. Basically, the kit almost restarts, but we'll talk more about that. There's a lot to talk about today. It's going to be a slow going video, I think. So I'm going to show you a few different examples now of playing this track and playing drums with it and how each drum kit brings the track to life in a different way. By the way, I should mention that the track in Logic that I'm using is Bluebird and the track from Superior is, uh, I want to say, the Jabo kit from um, uh, the Jabo and Clyde SDX. I don't know if it was an SDX. No, it was an EasyX. So it's basically an Easy Drummer kit. Um, I will link to it in the video description because I know I'm, I'm talking rubbish at the moment. But when I look at it later, I can, I'll definitely put it right. So, keeping it simple to begin with, I'll play the track and I'm going to talk about what I'm doing as well. So here's the track. So you think MIDI drumming's hard? Well, yes it is and no it's not. Like learning anything. There's hard and there's easy. We're going to start easy and ramp it up. Bass drum and snare drum first, C and D. That's all we're doing for now. Every four beats, a crash. On the C sharp above it. So that's intro stuff. That is intro stuff, and it sounds hard perhaps until you actually sit down and play the thing. One other thing I should mention, which I didn't, is that MIDI drumming has no rules. And that is to say, when you look at a keyboard and you think, oh, there's 61 keys, or however many keys you have, 88, 76, 73 even, 49, there's white and black keys, and you mustn't play these things in this order. Well, throw that out the window. That is not true. Not true at all. MIDI drumming is what you make it. And by which I mean, you're not playing piano anymore. Although you are playing an instrument that is chromatic in nature, MIDI drumming doesn't take that into effect and doesn't care about what you think about what you're playing. Okay? So you must drop that mentality when you start to play drums. You're not playing a piano, so to play C, D, F sharp and B flat is legal. Even though it might not sound it to begin with. You've got to put that out of your mind. Because when you switch into a drum mode, your keyboard is a drum machine. It is no longer a, a chromatic instrument with the 12 notes or 12 tones. Because if it were, this C here, which is actually a tom, would be the mirror of this C here, which is a bass drum. Just a different pitch. But it's not. They're all different, aren't they, as you can hear. So that's, that's really important. All right, so we've gotten a few basics down, but we have no hi-hat. Where can we put hi-hats? On every beat? Put a hi-hat on every beat. All right, we'll put a hi-hat on every beat, starting in now. And bass drum and snare drum. All right, we're getting somewhere. Okay. It's a bit bare though, isn't it? And that's because the hi-hat is mirroring what the bass and drum uh, snare is doing. So why don't we put the hi-hat in between those? Can we do that? I think we can. In between, here we come. Great. But what's next? What a bit of flair wouldn't go amiss. So what are you going to do? Ah, open hi-hat. And so, as you can see and hear, these things get more progressive with time, and the more that you practice, the better you can be. Now, you can do a lot of showing off with this sort of thing, and there will be a little bit of that too, just to show you that these things can sound real or fake or plastic or whatever you want to make them, but it's only for demonstration purposes. I think you'll enjoy some of that later anyway. So that's one kit. I use it as my demo kit when I'm doing demos like these, which I've done a few times before, to show that the most simple of drums can actually make a piece as well. Even though they're old, they can still fit. What you can't do with them 
is roll and make it sound convincing. But on a kit that's like above, this is the, one of the logic kits. You can or you can't, and it's all about finesse. One thing I will say though, is if you've got an 88 key keyboard and you're trying to do these things, rolling on the same key, you're gonna have a hard time of it. It's very difficult. It's very difficult indeed. And this is why, as a, uh, a keyboard player myself, I only play on synth action keys. I'm playing on a 61 key uh, complete control mark one because uh, it's, it's semi-weighted, not fully weighted. If you're doing that on piano weighted keys, it would hurt and uh, you'd, you'd get sore fingers after a while. But I can do this sort of thing for hours at a time, MIDI drumming like this, and it doesn't bother me at all. Here's the Superior Drummer Kit. And again with the rolls, because it's not the same sound every time I hit it. What they've done is recorded different drum hits at different loudnesses, if you will, every time the key is pressed. So it doesn't do the machine gun effect. The machine gun effect is what the 90s call this sound. Because it sounds like a machine gun going off. It has no differential at all. And so that's why. So now I'm going to play the same piece and play a little bit of drumming on each of the four kits in this piece and you can hear the differences in them. So we'll start with the, um, the Roland SC88 from old. That's one of the kits. We'll do the same with the GarageBand slash Logic kit, um, as I said, which is Bluebird. So uh, that kit, it's not one of my favorites, but it does show that uh, their drums have improved. And it comes with a free uh, with a free product. I mean, GarageBand for Mac is really quite decent and it has some very, very good sounds in it, by the way. I don't know if that's necessarily the best drum kit to use, but it's one of the sort of middle of the road ones and I thought it would be a good thing to show. Then we have the Superior Drum Kit, which I, I like a lot. a nice drum kit although the stuck bass drum is not there you are don't be stuck on me and then the last one studio drum which is uh, one of my all-time favorites and uh, it goes like this heard there I was using ghost notes no sorts 
stop stucking, sticking, stucking. And uh, the reason for that is, is because ghost notes fill out your piece more. If you play without ghost notes, and that's cool, and you can, but if you can do a few ghost notes on your hi-hat and on your snare, it's a very different feel. Demonstration. And that is the difference between step recording it and playing it live. And if you have to slow it down to play it, then by all means do so. This piece is 120, but if you slow it down, I don't know that everything is going to work exactly right if I do, but I'll slow it down to 90. I'll put the metronome for this. So that was slowed down to 90. So if you were to record it at that speed and then uh, speed it back up later, because you can get the, the rolls in, and the more you practice, the easier it becomes. Like playing this at, for example, 140 would be quite difficult for me as, as, as well. And I, I've been a MIDI drummer or self-professed MIDI drummer since the mid 90s, so a good 20 odd years. Um, so I, I, I will tell you that if, if you consider it cheating, that's fair enough, but I don't. If you wanna get the, that feel without the step record, then I, I do slow down sometimes to play drum passages, and I uh, I don't care. I do because it has to be done sometimes, and there's there's nothing wrong with that. So at the 120 speed, you might feel like it's too fast, so slow it down to wherever you're comfortable and play along with it at that speed, and that's perfectly okay. And if I were to record that, because uh, as long as you play um, as tightly to the metronome as you can, you'd succeed, and it would probably come out fairly reasonable. I haven't recorded that. I just um, was playing along to it at that speed just to show you what it's like. But it is definitely, definitely doable. So why, I hear you asking, why MIDI drum in the first place when there are so many drum loops out there and all that sort of thing? Well, it depends on how you feel about this. But I feel like, although there are lots of loops out there, and I have and will use them in the future, making your own is a wonderful feeling. And if you can... If you need to reuse it in a different piece later on, then you are the one who put the time and effort and the work into it. Someone else made that loop and uh, it's theirs, even though, you know, it might be royalty free or whatever. And I myself offer loops for free as well. So, you know, I am not um, saying not to use them by any means because that would be taking away from what I do. But that feeling of accomplishment when you make your own cannot be beat. So, yeah, if you have the opportunity to make something, make it. Take it, run with it, enjoy it. Now, you've heard a bit about what MIDI drumming can do. Let's talk about techniques and without the piece. Let's talk about drums and drum layout. So assuming you've got a 61 key keyboard and I've actually shifted mine up an octave, I'm gonna put it back down now. I've gone the wrong way. Then when you load up a drum kit, normally for the first time, you're gonna start right up top here or, or left hand end of the keyboard. So your, your first C, is usually going to be a bass drum. And we're going to take the GMGS standard as, as standard for the moment because the kits above are not that layout exactly. So that's why I've gone back to old hardware. I'm actually using hardware in this video. Um, and actually, the phone is resting on top of said hardware, believe it or not. Um, it's two units down from what the phone is resting on. The, the phone is resting on a Corgex 5DR sound module from 1994. And the module underneath it, the Roland SC88 Pro, is from 1997. And that's where these drum sounds, particularly this kit, is coming from today. I've never used this in a video before, so this is a video first. <laughs> so I'm not going to tell you about the whole drum layout because I think it's fun to do the research and play with it. And you can find such things in uh, Doors Worldwide. 
If you've ever heard of the Microsoft GS Wavetable Synthesizer, then you will have heard this drum kit possibly in action. Well, no, not this version, a slightly lesser version of it. A slightly inferior version, but it's something similar, and the layout is basically the same for all intents and purposes. So, I'm not sure who designed the GM layout, as in the person behind it, but Roland were instrumental, if you'll pardon the pun, in making it come to light. And it's interesting because a lot of it is playable one-handed. Here's my right hand. I'm not playing the drums now with, with it. I'm going to play them with my left hand. And it's interesting that they did that because it means that you have quite a lot of freedom of expression. And I, I particularly remember back in the early 90s when I didn't know, and I was using a hardware sequencer, how to um, share the drum track. Back in, the, back in those days, you had 16 MIDI channels and now you have a lot more. And channel 10 was designated as your drum channel. So I remember having to do a lot of uh, drum sharing back in the day and playing things very slow and doing such things as... All that in one in one go, much slower, because I didn't know how to um, to make another version of the track and play the auxiliary stuff. So I was, I, I, it taught me a lot about how to hand coordinate somewhat um, and do a lot of things in one go. I don't have to do a lot of that as much these days because um, with the with Logic I can just uh, you know repeat the track and have it empty and it be on the same channel if need be. So I've lost a lot of that skill that I used to have, which is unfortunate, but I can still do a little bit of that. It's funny though, what you lose and what you have. So as a result, I became a mini drummer because I wanted to make my own way in the world uh, drum wise. And back then there were no loops anyway that I could find or have access to. So I just used to make my own and, and uh, call it a day. So, drums. Normally, you will find in the old MIDI drum kits that the D and the E, because we're talking about snares now, are different sounds entirely, which isn't really that useful when you're trying to do rolls with two fingers or trills, because it just sounds ridiculous. Now, if I go up to, to the, the superior kit, you can tell they're the same snare, but one of them is the edge, and one of them um, is the middle. This is the middle, and that's the edge. So what they did is, in part, you can roll on the D and the E flat. Um, but what you want to get into the habit of doing is practicing rolling with uh, two fingers on one key. And then moving off at the last minute to another key or using your other hand for it. I don't know if you can see it that far down, so let me shift the keyboard to the middle. So I'm basically doing with my left hand um, middle and index finger rolling on the D and hitting the final snare with my right hand with the index finger. And then my right hand can do whatever else it needs to do. So like hitting the tom, for example, or a cymbal. But uh, if you're going to do that on this kit down here, it doesn't work right. So inspiration for me could be lost having to use some of these old drum kits these days but back then when that's all you had you had to just make do so the D&E toms are different and I haven't mentioned the black keys yet but I will get to those in a minute then you have six toms usually uh, from F to D F G A B C and D interestingly they're basically the same tom, just pitched differently. But on, on drum kits like above, they're actually different samples. But back then, they, they didn't do a lot of that, so... Basically the same sound, just copied across the keyboard and panned slightly. After that, you get a china cymbal, part of a ride cymbal, which is the bell, a crash, or well, a splash, really, and um, another crash. Uh, and the B is... Another ride, or part of the same ride. It's the same ride pitched in this instance. And then you get into auxiliary percussion. And that's normally where, normally, by the way, where these GM layouts then start to differ madly. Because above here you've got percussion and timbales and agogos and shakers and whistles and uh, what are they things called again? 
guiros and uh, claves uh, and cucas and triangles and more shakers and a sleigh bell and uh, a slidey thing, bell tree. And that's the GMGS layout. But then other companies will do different things entirely. So we'll talk about the black keys now. The, the C sharp above your bass drum, let me show, go back to here. The C sharp above your bass drum is usually a rim shot related to the D and the E snares. And the E flat is usually a clap, and it is in this instance too. So with these old drum kits, where they weren't specialist like Superior Drummer is or like Studio Drummer is, they had to fit a great deal into not much room. Uh, basically, 88 keys, maybe a little over, because you can go up and down the octave um, on all MIDI, on basically all MIDI keyboards that I know of. And so you can get to hidden keys. So if I, if I go down one here, as you maybe usually see, I play an octave up because it's easier to play in the middle of the keyboard or, well, not, not the very ground. Below, for example, below is another bass drum and you get all this other stuff that is not uh, present on all drum kits all the time. Anyway, I've gone off on a tangent. The next set of black keys are three in a row and they're hi-hat related. You've got uh, hi-hat with your pedal closed and then the pedal when you put your foot on the pedal and an open hi-hat on the cymbal here. Followed by the crash on the C-sharp, part of the ride on the E-flat, tambourine, and then we start getting to some auxiliary stuff, cowbell, vibra slap, and then what I showed you before. So, drum layouts. Yes, there are other interesting things, and they differ. They differ. Differ. I cannot speak. They differ from company to company, as I say. The, the kit above, for example, the Logic kit, um, if I look at the... This also has six toms, but they're different samples. Well, actually, they are the same... The, there are three toms and they're on two different keys so that the the last six or the last two notes exact um on the c and the d where on the kit below they would go um doing that they are copies of each other so you can roll on them and again down the keyboard and that's why you would want to do that and if we're talking about snares again, the D and the E, the edge on the E. And there's a clap on the E flat. So again, you'd have to practice rolling on the D. If we use that like as a bass, the hi-hat closed pedal, then you would be, for example. I can't even do it all the time myself. If I slow that down for you, I'm actually trying to do four rolls on the D and then an E hit, so. And I'm trying to crescendo that roll so that it comes up from ground up, which is important. You don't want to be all the same level, for example, on the roll. It just sounds ridiculous. So when I'm doing that at faster speed, if I can't do four, I do three. Turn it into a six, eight. quite difficult and it uh, you know it depends on what speed you do with that I'm just trying to go with a constant here also uh, when you when you start practicing your MIDI drumming for real which I hope that you'll take something away from this video and start to do play different speeds of drums uh, of patterns and uh, try to better the way that you play them because this piece is a flat 120 and you can play it at normal tempo But why not double it? Pretend it's a rock track. And 
and there's also you know changing up the, the, the way of it because a lot of people will of course just go but there's all sorts of different types of play playing uh, drum playing isn't there there's four there's uh, four on the floor so that's bass drum and snare well snare is on the and and bass drum is every Nice, simple pattern for you as well. And then, of course, you can swap it a bit like a Coldplay tra a kind of groove would be. So you basically have your snare going more often than the, than the bass drum. kinds of different rhythms then you've got reggae you've got jazz you've got swing bossa nova this all sorts of different things and i would honestly urge you all to practice these different things and what you're going to find is no matter what you're using different drum kits will make you play and react differently for example this drum kit has a wonderful uh, it's a wood block where the cowbell is if i go down one track to the logic track or down one track further to the old Roland kit you hear there's a cowbell there if I go up to this uh, this this uh, woodblock I like to do that so I've got my right for those who, are, who cannot see this video I've got uh, my my index finger on the cowbell sorry on the woodblock and my thumb on the hi-hat and I like to do that and then do a lot of left-handed work to, to practice my skill in this arena so if I do the same thing I was doing before ah, that way. Okay, let's practice some rolls. things like that. So it's good to keep something steady and practice discipline with your other hand, which sounds quite dirty, but I promise it isn't. So it's all about keeping time and keeping everything straight. Now this kit, which is the Studio Drama Kit, doesn't have cowbells or auxiliary percussion there. It has it down here. So it's, it's very difficult to play that um, the way that I play drums. Someone else will be able to manage it very easily, but my left hand, I think, is stronger than my right where drums are concerned. So for me to be able to use this in the same way that I did on the kit below is quite awkward. So when I'm doing uh, playing this kit, which is one of my favorites, as I said, I don't do that. I do other things. And on, um, on this kit, I'm not sure if you can see this far because it's quite close to the camera. On the last, well, on the octave below the last octave, but I normally shift it up, so to me it's last octave. But on the, um, on the A, the B, and the C are three, three snares, and they mirror, or the A mirrors the D down here, and the E also mirrors the D, and the, the C mirrors the E. So... The reason that that is useful to me is because it allows me to, to pretend uh, drum uh, snare rolls on, on the drums and do ghost notes live. So along with the piece,
and that's uh, one of the harder rhythms that I practice and keeping up the, the, um, the pattern to do it. Because basically my right hand is just doing that and my left hand is doing a lot of the work. So it's quite, that's quite a challenging one. And to play that for, you know, four or eight bars without losing it is actually quite hard. Let's see if I can try and show you. And at this speed as well. And the reason you practice at this speed is because someday you might be called on to do this. I have uh, played MIDI drums live before on, st on a stage for people when there was no drummer available. Yes! That is hard, I'm not gonna lie, because the right hand is just so... Stop getting stuck. Where are you? Bass is stuck. Stop stucking, stucking, stucking. Yeah, it, it's good, it's good practice, and it keeps you in shape. And the thing is, I've heard real drummers do things like that, and one of the aims for me is to be as realistic a drummer as physically possible. So that means, for example, not doing this sort of thing, because you don't have enough hands to do that. You can't hit snare and tom and cymbal. So when you uh, are playing MIDI drums and you mean it, um, in an electronic track where this is more acoustic, it's okay to get away with such things because there are less rules and that's why 30 second hi-hats and 128 hi-hat runs and rolls are fine and acceptable. But if you're doing uh, stuff that is acoustic, then you need to be really practicing the best way not to hit more than the drummer can hit. And the same goes for keyboard guitarists. I'm not one. I'm, I'm not skillful enough to be a good keyboard guitarist. I am much better at MIDI drumming, if I do say so. So I don't really, I don't really do that. I know people that do, and they're phenomenal at what they do. Um, but a MIDI drummer is just as important if, if you want your work to sound good. And I strongly believe this. So... Um, what else did I want to cover? A couple of more playing styles for you. And um, as I say, I'm going to make this piece available as a multi-track and as a two-track within the multi-track so that you can play it along and uh, do what you want with it and have a, have a drum play with it. Um, we talked about bossa nova and uh, there's also, you know, for example, reggae and calypso that you can play along to it and jazz. What, what kit would be best for jazz? Could do jazz with this, I suppose. If I go down to the uh, superior drummer kit, because I think it's much better for bossa nova, you can do bossa nova at normal time, or, well, half time. If you're practicing, yep, yeah, it's good. Also practice playing in different measures. So we're doing sort of four fours now. And eventually, when you can get when you get real crazy practice hi-hats on the same key with two hands so that you can do
practice moving where your hand is. that sort of thing all these sorts of different movements that you can practice and uh, there are lots of really good beginner uh, actual drum videos and if you listen to those and how slow that some of them go and I don't mean slow as oh my gosh it's so slow it's horrible but if you listen to some of the beginner drum videos and um, if you want to better your, your MIDI drumming skills play along with some of those they can really help um, because some of them they do some really great things on real kit and if you listen to what they're playing and mirror it the same way that you would when you're transcribing music by ear. You can transcribe drum playing by ear just the same. And hopefully you'll be able to get something like that out of this video as well. Um, you, can, you can follow along and do some fantastic things. I've learned a lot by listening to people like Pete Lockett and um, oh, Craig Blundell, for example. I like drummers like that. I might not be able to do all of the things they do um, because it's just being a professional drummer versus uh, you know a wannabe MIDI drummer it's a different thing and I'm not saying by any by by any means by the way that uh, MIDI drumming is ever going to take over from real drummers but there's nothing wrong with practicing the art form to the best of your ability because I don't have an electronic drum kit in my house I have a piano and my wife was reticent to let me have even that much so I'm not going to ask her to now al allow me to get a MIDI drum kit uh, sorry uh, electronic drum kit and practice on that when I've got a keyboard to do it so I hope you've taken something um, interesting from this video and if I didn't cover something that I should have, please do let me know. I tried to go from basic and show you some patterns and go a little faster and a little higher and all that sort of thing. But um, I hope that you've enjoyed what you've heard today. And uh, if you have, thanks for watching. I'm going to end with a little bit of drum playing across all of the kits that I have here and the video's basically ended. So thanks for watching and take care.